Welcome, dorks, nerds, and geeks. This is the Dork Side Podcast. I'm your host this week, Hunter Rennick. I'm here with Tate to talk all about the boner jokes that we saw last week. That's right, we are talking WandaVision, so spoilers right off the bat. It's going to be a long podcast, and we're going to be talking about everything with the future of WandaVision and what we thought of the series. So, buckle in, and before you buckle in, hold that buckle, okay? Hold that buckle. We do have a sponsor this week, and the sponsor is Treadnought TV. What is Treadnought TV? Well, you'll find out a little bit later, but if you want to right now, you can go to www.treadnoughttv.com and check out our new website. Some exciting stuff happening over there. Anyways, Tate. All right, so all the speculation. Is this the Fox Quicksilver? Is this is this someone being controlled by someone? Is it this? Is it this? We got a boner joke out of it. How, yeah. how do you feel about that? <laughs> I I don't know. It was a little disappointing, I guess. Mm-hmm. I imagine I probably wasn't as disappointed as most people are because honestly, I haven't seen any of the X-Men, the Fox X-Men movies. Yeah. But like when I first saw that, my first thoughts were like, all right, so that right there basically confirms like the multiverse. And then it didn't. Yes. But, which I mean, you know, it's eventually, you know, the multiverse is going to be a thing. It's the name of the next Doctor Strange movie. Mm-hmm. So like, obviously it's going to happen. It just hasn't been like confirmed they've they've actually teased the multiverse a lot they teased it in second spider-man the F- far from home far from home yep i was gonna mention but then that, that because... turned out to be a lie they kind of yep. teased it here and then that turned out to be a lie mm-hmm. what if it's a lie in dr strange so, at all they're just like nope no multiverse <laughs> technically speaking they haven't teased it they have shown the multiverse because how they explain time travel and endgame is they're not traveling in time they're just going to different universes at the same exact point that it was the same in their universe so uh, yeah because remember when the the uh the ancient one supreme yeah. the ancient one ex- explained it she's like if you take a affinity stone out of a, a universe it like sends it on a dark path and not into this timeline right so that right, was the whole right. thing that was so technically they have seen it so god though i i, I was definitely disappointed because he's a really good actor and I, I and everyone really liked him as quicksilver so i hope him being in this part doesn't mean he won't be the only thing that i thought was really weird is that she also somehow gave him Quicksilver's power. Like, I could, I, I didn't think she was that power enough to give someone powers consistently. You know what I mean? Because even when she wasn't near him, he could still run fast. Or at least they didn't show her near him. Um, yeah, well, I guess it was... It was probably part of, like, the necklace he was wearing was probably gave him, like, mind-controlled yeah. and gave him the powers, I would imagine. I, I guess one thing that I guess we didn't talk about, it, it was it was, Ag- it was Agatha all along. Uh, yeah. Um, it... It seemed painstakingly obvious at first that I didn't want to believe it because it, it seemed almost too obvious that it was her. And, I, and at first, I really wanted it just to be Wanda, which technically they, it still was. It, it Technically, she... Well, actually, I guess it was never Agatha, technically. She was the one making the mischief within the universe or within the little yeah, the hex. It, like, her whole thing was she was trying to find out how Wanda did it and really yeah. was just snooping i guess she was the snooper that was snooping really yeah she, she was the nosy neighbor you know <laughs> she literally mm-hmm. what she was her character and she played it pretty well um but it, it is interesting and the only thing i i dislike marvel doing sometimes is you know uh scarlet witch somehow almost took down thanos they even mentioned it i think in the show sometime um by herself Mm-hmm. Which is Thanos was supposed to be the big bad, which is maybe this is also them trying to move past. Like, listen, Thanos won't be the only big bad, but then you get, you know, Ag- Agatha Harkness, and it's like she's literally as powerful or more powerful than Scarlet Witch. It's like, okay, where the fuck were you? Why aren't you destroying half the universe? Like, come on. <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, you don't really know what Agatha's end goal is. Like, because mm-hmm. obviously she wanted uh, Scarlet Witch's powers and wanted to understand it. But you don't really know what for. Like, if she would get those powers, what did she plan on doing with them? Nobody yeah. really knows. Yeah. Was it just she was power hungry? Because it seemed like that's kind of what it was. Because what the, the other thing too, this is a problem sometimes with like the MCU, and it will probably keep on happening in the future. Is when you introduce a new character that supposedly existed for this long, it then raises the question like, what were they doing, or where were they in these other events when they wouldn't have done something like? During the events mm-hmm. of Captain Marvel, why didn't she like try to like take Captain Marvel's powers or something? You know, it's it, it raises questions like that potentially. Um, but I guess we're talking yeah. about the Scarlet Witch, 
Wanda is the Scarlet Witch now, which is apparently a who would have known? <clears throat> yeah, who who would have known? It surprised. Like I'm excited to see what they do with this new character, um, but apparently the Scarlet Witch is um, written about in books is known for chaos magic and all this stuff, and apparently is like cursed to um, <clears throat> basically destroy everything around her, which basically is what she was in the comics. The interesting thing that they mentioned in one of the commercials, which we'll get, on, we'll get more into the commercials a little bit later, because those were pretty cool and interesting, with the more context at the end of the show, too, um, is she was... They brought up the Nexus, I think is what it's called. Which Nexus yeah, being antidepressant. Yes. <laughs> great. The commercials were great, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but with, like, the Nexus being... Um, I, I didn't know about this before. Um, I'm really big into Marvel, but basically the MCU is what introduced me to stuff, and then I kind of get to research through that. From my quick research and my understanding, a Nexus being is someone who is the same exact person in every single universe. So, apparently in the comics, uh, Wanda slash Scarlet Witch is the same exact person um, in every single universe. So potentially what happened when she became the Scarlet Witch, she now knows and has the power of and the knowledge of the Scarlet Witch. Like the Scarlet Witch in the comics that destroyed all the new, the mutants, you know. The, the, the One of the most powerful people who like has rewritten reality um, in the comics. And it, it's cool because um, there's interviews that you can see with uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen where she's like super super excited and that she wants to do this because there's one comic there's one interview sorry <clears throat> way back when she did age of ultron that i watched that she was um like super excited she's like oh yeah i, I really love when they let like scarlet Witch go like like let loose and like do like the, the like the dark side of stuff i, I really want to do one of those one day and she like said that all the way back in age of ultron and um, in the interviews coming up, you can tell she was like super excited because she was working basically on her passion project with Marvel, at least like the thing that she wanted to do most. And you can see the excitement that she had. And it's really cool seeing like how they basically mix together um, all like I think it's like three different comic books. I can't remember the names of all of them, but I think one is literally called WandaVision, which was like the home life of uh, Wanda and Vision in the suburbs trying to be normal and fit in. In the comics, what happened actually was she had kids that ended up being fake that she had a tantrum or whatever, not tantrum. She like had an outburst and was like saying like, Hey, where are my kids? Where are my kids? Like, and saying like, like telling the Avengers that. And when she, I believe that is the Avengers like, Hey, your kids don't exist. Wanda like, listen, they don't exist. And she, I think that's around the time where she muttered and like got rid of the mutants is because of her distress. She's never been a villain necessarily. A lot of the times that it happened in the movies and in, the the comic books is when she does stuff it's because she is emotionally and mentally unstable because of all this stuff going on literally wanda she was alone she lost her brother her family her her lover she that was literally going to um the house that they were gonna like you know live their life in and right after seeing her loved one torn apart for parts that that heart-wrenching scene with the I don't feel you was just like a, a gut punch. And the other thing too is like uh, you got, you know, sword bad guys trying to show that she stole vision. Cause at first we thought, you know, vision was vision. It was the vision that we knew, but now it makes sense why he didn't have his memories, why he didn't have all this stuff because it wasn't, she didn't steal the actual vision. She made a completely new one out of memories and all that stuff out of, we find out the mind stone inside of her. Um, but I even called it because when her brother died in Age of Ultron, she drops to her knees and she outbursts and disintegrates all the Ultron bots. When when she like started to like cry and like went in the middle of that, I, I literally when I was watching, I'm like, she's she's gonna she's gonna just poof. and then she did and oh my god she did. <laughs> she rewritten all of Westview and basically held captive a bunch of people because of her grief and sadness. Um, so. Which was interesting, again, seeing, like, all the, the people uh, of, of the Westview or whatever, and, like, the whole, when they broke out of their, um, I guess, mind control that Wanda put on them. Um, yeah, no, that was really interesting, seeing them all, like, corner her. And it was because it's not, like, it didn't feel like an angry mob, because obviously, like, they're not going to hurt her. Like, she could kill them all if she mm-hmm. wanted to, but more just them 
looking at her and just basically saying like what have you done to us just trying to make mm -hmm. her understand the pain she caused them i forget what exactly it was but something happened where she started she you know got distressed again and like started just choking all them and then mm -hmm. immediately was like oh god no i don't want to hurt you anymore uh, i think one of them they were like basically telling her like we feel your grief we feel your pain and then one of them said if you won't let us leave just let us just, just let us die and then she uh, basically yeah, kept, then it was just a bunch of people like um surrounded her and she basically just couldn't take it and accidentally choked them right. um and, and and that's like the that's the one thing that i think marvel does so much better than dc currently is you have this like very powerful being but the reason why all this stuff is happening is because she's just been mentally distressed and beaten down again like like i said she's she's got no one left she just wanted to have her normal, but everything keeps on getting taken away from her. So Marvel does a really good job at relating and being human with their characters. She's literally a mutant witch, one of the most powerful reality bending people. But you got the backstory. This is the coolest thing. You get the backstory of she loved sitcoms. She watched it with her parents. You get to see your parents. You get to see the Stark bomb that killed her. And then you find out she's been a mutant or a witch or whatever all along. That the, the bomb that didn't go off wasn't faulty because everyone knows Stark tech doesn't break. She was the one that made it stop. She didn't know that. Mm -hmm. and, and also one thing, you know, you pray, we always praise MCU for consistency. I noticed an inconsistency for it. What? In Age of Ultron, which who knows, it may have just been whatever. He remembered it wrong. But uh, they said, oh, we waited in the rubble. There was a bomb with one word printed on it, Stark. But then you look at the bomb, it says Stark Industries. I'm like, nope, nope, wrong, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that was more of like for the enunciation because there's, if you would say there was two words written on it, Stark Industries, right. it would have and, been uh, a lot more. I don't know. And also they said they were buried under rubble for three days and thought oh, like every, she said like every move, I thought this will set it off. But then it showed <laughs> them they were just under a table. Like they weren't really buried. So my, my, my assumption with that is, um, for one, you have to remember, even though these are like high production stuff, these are still technically TV shows in a way. So there will probably be points where like, right. Production... And like I'm saying, like, these are just very small <laughs> in like, yeah. These are, this is literally like the only criticisms you can make about it. Cause other than that, they, it's, it's just amazing how far ahead they think of everything and everything's mm -hmm. the same. We have to just t get the little small things to be like, ah, that's yeah. wrong. It's like, do you realize that Wanda didn't have her shoelace t tied in that one scene? Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous, Marvel. But I, I'm, I'm super excited to see the making of, of the series. Like, I, I, I live for that stuff, like the behind the scenes and like seeing how they actually did this. Because this entire series has been awesome. Like, the, I wish I would have been able to work on this. And like, the people who got to work on this had to be like, had so much fun because you were able to you know, harken back to television and media in the past and, like, pay homage to all those things while also making this very personal, deep um, story about this broken character who's trying to fix her life the best she can while also filming a comedy sitcom while also having, like, a sci-fi, uh, sci-fi, like, action superhero movie while also, and also, and also, and also, you know what I mean? Like, th this show like was everything with mm. like with like the commercials and stuff which the commercials we find out was basically all of her memories like put into um uh video format you got the toaster that was the beeping stark toaster or stark bomb like we uh thought it was you got the hydra when she was in um the that when she was radicalized at hydra you have the um nexus bean which is the scarlet witch you have um the yo steel yo magic which is uh, agatha that one was the weirdest one out of all of them, that claymation. Wait, was it actually called Steel Yo Magic? Well, is that it, what it was? Or it was is like, that just the It was called Yo Magic and I think the the, the like at the end it said something like like we grab grabbing like steal a yo magic uh at the shelves tonight or something like that. I don't oh, remember exactly. I didn't realize I didn't realize that. Um and then, gosh, we're probably missing. I'm probably missing some, but like, it was cool because a lot of people theorized that, like, oh, hey, this is what this is, you know, like, and because it made sense with, like, again, the stark red toaster beeping. It sounded like the bombs because we saw that in the very first Iron Man when, you know, he, he basically mm -hmm. became Iron Man. Um, and that's the cool thing too is that, like, 
even that, like, that was a reference to Wanda and her upbringing and Age of Ultron, but that was also a reference to what we knew at the very start of the MCU. That's the amazing thing with this, is that because there is so much stuff built up, is that there's just all these things that you can reference, even the small things. Like, Jimmy Woo, since he was in, um, in um, Ant-Man 2, that whole time, he was, like, asking Scott, like, how do you do the magic tricks? Like, how do you do that, Scott? You need to ex- you explain it to me. And in this, like, the very first time you meet him, he goes, and, like, flips out his card, like, Jimmy Woo, which is his, you know, he learned how to do the card trick. And then when he gets out of the, um, sorry, uh, when he gets out of the, like, handcuffs, he, he does, it, like, the he just flourish, just like, again, when um, Vision mm-hmm. did in the whole magic routine. <laughs> and, like, those are such small things that it's, like, even if you don't notice them or haven't, like, watched previous ones, it's, like, it doesn't. It doesn't really like it doesn't take away from it. Those are just such small things where you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But it, it's so cool because it's just the, the, another great thing that Marvel does is that they know how to develop characters. Like, you know, when you think developing characters, you think, oh, this person becomes like a good like a good guy to a bad guy, or like they learn a lesson. You don't think like, oh, we need to make sure we uh, develop his magic trick like l- storyline. You know what I mean? Like, normally those things are important, but it seems like someone at Marvel, probably Kevin Feige, is like, listen, we, we, we need to like put this in because there will be fans that will be like, oh, we last time we saw him, he was working on magic tricks. So this time, clearly, he would know magic tricks. And like having Darcy come in from uh, Thor two and Thor one was amazing. Having Monica, a grown up grown-up version of the the child in um captain marvel oh my gosh the 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 scene uh of her coming back from the snap i thought i thought it was wanda like destroyed her at first and then when i realized like everything going on i was like we're we're getting to see the snap i know i was i was it was it was was great seeing like the reality of that and really i want to see more of that of like how because you just wonder how would life go on if like half of the population disappears for five years and then comes back like mm-hmm. there is so many different storylines that you could do just on like that concept alone i know it's just it's gonna be cool to see where they go with it and the, the cool thing too because everyone kept on saying like oh now that they did that they'll probably just ignore it and so far they haven't been ignoring it and even uh mm-hmm. jimmy Wu brought up even the sokovia accords within C- civil war in the comic books when uh civil war happened and all the i forget what it's called in the comic books at the moment but they had um their own set of laws that happened the comic books just sort of went yeah, they don't exist anymore because it basically yeah. really hindered everything. But it's cool that they're like still basically bringing it up. But obviously, I don't think anyone cares anymore because they, you know, Iron Man saved the world in Endgame. Um, but it's cool that they still reference that because I'm pretty sure in Ant Man Two, also um, Jimmy Woo um, was like really like remembered the whole like book or whatever, and like it was literally just those small things. In Ant Man Two, they set up that he remembered all the Scovia Accords. So when uh, God, what is the name of the sword main guy? Hayward. Uh, Hayward. When Hayward mentioned something, he's like, oh yeah, Article 3, number, section, whatever thing from the Scovia Accords. It was just a really th- quick throwaway line that didn't really go anywhere. We don't know what that article necessarily is, but it's like, oh hey, they threw that in because it, Jimmy Woo was shown to be that person, that character, to like mention that and be that in, in the past. Mm, and even that part specifically is something I didn't really <laughs> notice. And, you know, just me noticing it didn't really take away from the experience. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where it's like, you don't need to know, but if you do, it's like, oh, that's cool. It just adds an extra, like, layer to it. Mm-hmm. And, and there's so many little things, just, like, little details. Like, almost every single license plate in every single Marvel movie is, like, a reference to a comic book. I think the license plates in this one had Stanley's birthday on it, on, like, the cop car. Oh, yeah, it, I think I is what it was. Like, th- it's just the crazy small details like again no one would probably really care or notice if that was wrong and all the spider-man flicks they always have the comic books that they're referencing on like the plates or whatever uh like the number um going back to something not not in the mcu one of my favorite films amazing spider-man 2 when spoilers uh gwen died at the end the clock tower stops at exactly i forget the number i should really know it but the clock tower stops on the issue number of the the comic book of the night Gwen Stacy died. So the time mm. stopped literally on the, the issue number of that. So like Marvel and all this, like it, the benefit that they have and why I think Marvel is so good is because I, I talked to this earlier and I might've mentioned it a bit, but like you, we keep on saying like, how do they plan these ahead? How do they plan this? They literally have like 
you know, 50, 60, how many years it is now of Marvel Comics to go off of. They basically already have storyboards, scripts, and storylines, and, like, sequels and prequels all planned out for them. And all they have to do is cherry-pick the best parts of each one and change the parts that people don't like. And I think that's why they're so good. And that's why I think a lot of superhero movies are so good, is because with production and all that stuff, you know, if you make a complete new idea from scratch, it's going to take a while to refine every single little detail, but you normally don't have that time in Hollywood, so when it comes out, you know, there's going to be, like, these few things that aren't right or wrong. But, like I said, they literally have all of these things already, like, tested for, by audience. They know what people like. They know all this stuff. Like, they basically have all the pre-production there for them already. They just need to put it into live action and CGI somehow. And I, I really think that's why these come out so good, is because they basically already have had years of pre-production. And then with Kevin Feige, who is a huge comic book nerd, who has been had his hand in all of these other, like, films in the past, who is, like basically seen through like all these because I think he was part of the X-Men I think he was part of the Spider-Man films the original Spider-Man films he's been there all along like Daredevil films like he knows and is a fan and he knows what people like and having him at the head it's very clear that you get those little like tiny details and all that stuff um but I don't know Marvel is just like so amazing with that kind of stuff um Gosh, we need to get back to WandaVision specifically because there is so much that happened. Like, like, oh, yeah. Like, gosh, I'm seeing double vision right now. <laughs> <laughs> so my theory with the vision, which I know 99% probably is not true, mm-hmm. but what I think, at least it makes sense in my head, is that he's going to just go off and kill himself because, <laughs> okay, hear me out uh-huh. <laughs> because he said that his programming is to destroy the vision and then his last words were i am vision before flying away he's gonna go destroy the vision i know that that is likely not gonna happen but that's just how it seems he just flies straight into the sun <laughs> flies, no he just flies straight up and then like just turns off his thing just smacks into oh the gosh. ground dies i don't even know if that would kill him probably not Pro- no he's made of vibranium <laughs> probably will yeah. not um but and it's interesting though because he now has all of vision's memories mm-hmm. before dying mm-hmm. but doesn't have the memories of like living in the hex with wanda mm-hmm. so it's gonna be weird how just what he's gonna do going forward yeah and i i, I was really I was hoping it was gonna be ultron because technically speaking ultron uploaded like what 20 percent of his body or 20% of his memory to Vision before he was taken. Mm-hmm. So I was really hoping you would have got James Spader, right? Yeah, I think James so. James Spader's voice uh, coming out of him. But I still think they were... I think that's what they're kind of going for a bit, was the Ultron side of things. Um, but I, I love that we got the, like... You know, we got to see... The fight scenes in this was great. The effects were great. It was crazy, for again, for like a television show, technically. Um but it's probably because they have a bunch of assets already from all the movies, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But, like, it was awesome to see... Because Vision was always the... He didn't fight. Like, he always was the one that would, like, sit back and just talk through things and think things through. It was cool that we got to see those two fight and be the match for each other. And seeing the Mind Stone Vision fighting real Vision, the Mind Stone Vision, obviously for some reason has like more has more of the memories of how to fight and he had an upper hand and all that and it was but it was really cool seeing them fight and have that but it's awesome that their fight ended um intellectually and until well i said that wrong but you know what i mean like it's, it's ended with them speaking it out. right and, and you know because really they were like an even match like there's because mm-hmm. especially when you think of like the powers of being able to phase through like <laughs> Eventually, they could probably just both infinitely phase through each other, and it's like, all right, how do you even go from there in like an actual yeah. fight scenario? And so they just like had a just debate about philosophy and stuff. And it was cool because if you think of it, like it, it was soul versus body. You know what I mean? You you basically have the mind versus the body. The the because the um hell the mind stone it's not the soul stone, but the mind stone was basically vision soul. The person that Vision wants to be, what Wanda thought he was, what he he can be at the best, and then you have the the body of the real Vision of what and all that. Um, and the other thing too that I think they did on purpose is that like library or whatever that they had to fight in. 
was very reminiscent of the church that uh, Vision and Ultron fought, fought in, in Age of Ultron. It was like the same circular pattern and like even some of their like fight choreographs and stuff was kind of the same of when Vision like attacked Ultron in the church. So I'm assuming that was a little bit on purpose too. Um, but yeah, he just fucked off, you know? We, we don't know what happened with him. It, like he's like, I am uh, yeah, Vision. Yeah, he just said, I am Vision and then left. Like I was expecting which him to my go... Money, my money's on he's killing himself even though I know it's... <laughs> That's not gonna happen, but hey, I'm he, I'm sticking with it. Yeah, he's probably flying into Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness right now. Um, Who knows? Oh, I, I want to say too, it was hilarious because uh, Paul Bettany kept on teasing that he worked with an actor he wanted to work with forever, and that he had so much chemistry with this actor. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like pretty sure he was just talking about himself. And I will say that's too. That's the other impressive thing is that he did this really emotional, tender scene with himself. I, I, I'm really curious if they had a stand-in or if he was literally just, like, talking to no one. Um, because, God, the acting in this, the acting in the MCU is just ridiculously great. You know what I mean? We're, like, spoiled. Everything with the MCU, honestly, we're just so spoiled. And it it's so crazy to think that Marvel almost went bankrupt in the 90s. You know what I mean? It, it's, mm-hmm. it's so crazy to think that even, like, Iron Man and Avengers were B-list teams or superheroes and now they're like the most well-known names in everyone's household the highest grossing like franchise and it's 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 crazy what marvel has done uh with the mcu and no one else has really ever been able to like copy at the moment um but gosh let's get into like uh, i think we should probably get into more of like the battle between agatha and um wanda um and maybe a little bit of like the the her walking through her memories because the memories were awesome to see the we talked about that a bit but like seeing again the mind stone like chose her um and that's where she got her connection with vision is that um the mind stone saw and knew that she was probably a nexus being i would assume since the minds they are the stones basically created the universes so it basically Mm -hmm. beckoned to her enhanced her powers and then probably also spared quicksilver and gave him powers because of they never really answered that um, but because it saw something. And uh, I forget if I mentioned this. Um, the cool and interesting thing which they seem to be doing is in the comics, the Infinity Stones are sentient. They have thoughts and minds and stuff like that, and sometimes people have read them. And they've even became... There's one time where one of the, the stones, uh, I think they're called gems in the comic books, became sentient and became a, um, a little girl... And the little girl went and ran to Red Skull because she saw him obsessing and wanted to go after her as, like, a father figure or someone who cared. Um, that, and that led into the whole Hail Hydra, um, Captain America storyline that everyone hated. Um, but I'm pretty sure Vision, basically, or what is Vision that we know of, basically started talking to Wanda in the Hydra facility in the Scepter. That's when they like talked and that's when they first met and then when you get the when they and that's why he was attracted to her and saved her in age of ultron and where that whole thing started and that's why when she talks and she does the you know this like i feel you she's the you is the stone because the stone and vision is just the stone with a body because uh to go forward a bit once uh the kids and vision get you know i guess i don't know what they get vaporized i guess when the hex closes down um you get that talk with wanda and vision asking what am i and she says you are the part of the mind stone that lives inside me and he goes it's like i i was a voice without a body so he was the stone not able to say anything he was then a body with a voice i think is what he says so he was vision and then he became a memory of vision with when wanda created him um and then it ends with like i I wonder what i'll be next because again technically speaking yes it's wanda and vision but technically it's scarlet witch and the stone it sounds funny but it legitimately is because comic books are weird right have this connection um and gosh i didn't think they would actually get rid of the kids i i I didn't think they'd go that far not really because you know the 
I mean, they're obviously going to come back after credits, but yeah, that was interesting. And definitely thinking of the relationship being between like Scarlet Witch and the Mind Stone, it, it makes more sense, like thinking about it like that and kind of giving them that connection. Because I remember mm. my first time watching Infinity War, it, like the part where they are like hiding out together and like start making out, whatever. I'm just like, what? Like to me, that just came out of nowhere. I'm like, wh where did this come from? What? But then thinking about it like that, and especially just watching the older movies of like Age of Ultron and Civil War, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, so they they were kind of like setting them up. Mm -hmm. And then with Infinity War, there was a whole like I think two year time jump. So obviously most of that happened off screen. And even you, how you showed how they showed in Wandavision her flashbacks of like Vision talking to her while she's all alone at the headquarters and it's like okay so like all that happened off screen you just didn't see it at mm -hmm. the time so for me it just came out of nowhere but then now with the whole series going through it's like it makes a lot more sense now to me this this series also had so many great lines the the what is love or what is grief but love persevering like they it, it, it had so many great personal moments so many great lines so many just it it, it so much of the show was great because no one knew like after this i think solidifies that marvel knows what they're doing e you know after endgame everyone was like what's what's next what's next you know oh they're mm -hmm. probably not gonna do good and they're like hey hold, hold my affinity gauntlet Boom. i know and even i was thinking <laughs> after infinity war i was like you know i'll probably watch the movies i really don't know if i'll watch the shows and then watching this now it's like wow i'm hyped for all the sh shows movies anything <laughs> else it's like I just know they're going to be good. Yeah, and because, like, that's the thing, too, is everyone said it. Endgame felt like a finale. Like, that was it. That en end of the book, because it was end of the chapter, mm -hmm. you know? And and now we're just on to the next book, basically. But they also, if you look back at it, too, like, with uh, Hawkeye talking to, um, to Wanda, you, they planted those seeds of, like, what basically led up to WandaVision. Because this all happened, I think they said, like, a week after the snap, basically. Um, a week or two uh, after the snap. A week after, like the uh, the Hulk snap, bringing everybody yes, back. Yes. Yes. Um, it's just, it, I don't know. It's, it's just so cool, like how they just everything just plays into each other. It's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, and I guess we can get into like the end credit scenes. I think we've kind of sort of went around everything. I guess before we get into that, what would you? Overall, for this series, because I know a lot of people at first like thought the first three episodes might have been a little bit slow, but overall, now the series is done. What is your final thoughts? What would, what would be like a out of ten? What would you give this series? Out of ten, I'd give it like a nine, nine and a half, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time giving like pretty much anything a ten rating because obviously yeah. there's like little things here and there, but it was really great. And I said like the first three episodes were. They were they always left you wanting a little bit more, and then episode four is when they like pulled the curtain back and it's just like here's everything, it's all kicking off, and that's when it's like okay, mm -hmm. just pretty much every episode from there got better. Yeah, it, it was like so I just thought the entire thing was great. Yeah, it, it the, but I think so for me, I would again I would, I would say the same thing. Like I don't know if I can give anything a perfect ten, but this was pretty close to like a nine point nine out of ten. It like blew my expectations out of the water and with with me being a big marvel fan with me being a big like production buff and movie buff and you know growing up with some of these sitcoms because i used to always go over to um my uh, grandma's house and they would always watch uh old like cowboy series and stuff like that um and my dad has been watching little house on the prairie every single morning uh, <laughs> and i've been watching that with him and like i grew up with all these things so like and all those things together like this show was just like perfect for me uh, again like a, a good 9.9 .9 out of 10 because the first shows three shows might have been slow but i think once you see the end it makes sense why they were that it was a slow burn to like showing because i think they wanted to trick people into being oh this is just a sitcom you know what i mean this is just like us doing this thing mm -hmm. it and, was always a sitcom with just very little things here and there out of place that just kept mm -hmm. you wondering and kept you like coming back seeing where they'd go with it and Again, like 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 you said, I, it is just keep, keeps you wondering, and people are like, "Oh, this is slow or this was dumb," but that was the whole point. It wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. um, punchy, punchy all this right away because Marvel is really good at showing human and character stories, and this this story, this like whole uh, Wanda Vision, was a very personal story between Wanda and Vision. It wasn't 
even the climactic battle technically wasn't what it was all leading up to. It was all about Wanda's grief. And mm-hmm. Mar- I, I love what Marvel's doing because I might have said this before, but basically what I see that they do compared to other studios is they don't just make superhero movies or superhero shows. They put superheroes in different genres and see what happens. You know, they literally just put superheroes in a sitcom or they put superheroes in a heist movie or a spy movie. And, and they just, it's just so cool and like awesome with what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes me wonder with like, uh, with Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming up, it's like WandaVision like literally was a tv series it was based on like older tv series and stuff like Mm -hmm. there's no way you could have made that into a movie like it didn't feel like a Mm -hmm. movie broken up into however many episodes it makes me wonder which i have a faith in marvel that Mm -hmm. uh falcon and the winter soldier isn't gonna feel like a really long drawn out movie Mm -hmm. but it's just how they had like each episode to go off. It's like, this is the episode where this happens. It's like this decade and then this mm-hmm. decade, but Falcon and the winter soldier is going to be just like its own series. where like, I don't, it may be harder to differentiate like between episodes. Cause yeah. WandaVision, it's like literally every episode was, this is the one that was based on this show. This is this. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I mean, like I said, I have faith that the MCU yeah. knows what they're doing and that it's going to be great, but mm-hmm. it's just going to be interesting to compare the two series. Yeah, I, I I, will say, like, I think the last two episodes of WandaVision could have been a movie. They seemed, yeah, they, definitely. It, it really seemed like, because it, it would have been, like, I think, an hour and 20 minutes, roughly. I think. I might be wrong with that. It might have been a little, a little bit less, but, like, those two put together would have been, like, a perfect movie. If they really wanted to put, like, the finale in theaters or something like that, the, I think that would have been awesome. But the great thing with, like, this is you already have 10 years of backstory. 11 or 12 years at this point of the MCU backstory. And then mm-hmm. to do TV shows where you have these long episodes where you can actually touch on those small little things, those little quirks, or, like, like again, we got... A, Wanda wasn't really a prominent, prominent person, you know? She was technically, like, one of the B characters in the Avengers, even in the films. And to get this very personal story and, like, looking back of why she is the way she is, we would have never got that in a movie, I don't think. Uh, especially, at least, to this length. And um, I- I'm super excited for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I loved uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier, and Bucky's one of my favorite characters, and Captain America's one of my favorite characters. Falcon is awesome. Um, I'm-, I'm assuming... With this, we need to look at something like Mandalorian, you know? The Mandalorian did great. It might just be more of, like, an episodic, like, adventure type thing. I don't know. I don't think it will, though. Because it seems like with all the new shows that they're putting out, is it something different, you know? Um, My understanding, it seems like it might be a little bit of a critique on America and everything going on um, with the... I forget what it's called, but... um, there's obviously the like fake, fake Captain America in the trailer where he like goes and high fives like the guy, um, that you know, not not to get too political, but they probably America wanted to probably pick their next Captain America if you get my drift. You know, they might have not wanted to have the Captain America that the real one picked, um, or they might have not seen him as the right choice, and. That's, that's that's the thing with Marvel too. Uh, not again. I'm trying not to get into it too much. Is that they do touch on those topics. I think in a good way, um, and a not too serious, but a not too non-serious way. And I think that's what it's starting to look like a bit more. But it's still going to be, I think, like a buddy. I think what it actually will mostly be is like a buddy action film between um, Bucky and um, and Sam because they had such great chemistry in Civil War, and I just the whole like, can you move your seat forward? No. <laughs> All right. Like that, that whole thing is like, um, <coughs> it's like, uh, I think that too. It definitely, I would th- think would be more humorous because mm-hmm. the humor in WandaVision was always like, it was like sitcom humor. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it was kind of funny, but it was just weird the, because at that point it was like, you didn't know what was going on mm-hmm. and it was just funny. But at the same time, you're like, but why is this happening? Mm-hmm. Like the humor, and then it's it's gonna be more straightforward, I think, in mm. Falcon and the Winter Soldier of just the chemistry they have together, their whole like back and forth things. Yeah, I I just love those two, and like that's the other thing too. I loved again going back to WandaVision is the whole the the humor. Like the jokes were bad, 
You know what I mean? Like, the sitcom stuff uh-huh. and all that stuff, it was bad, but that's because they were literally staying so true to these, like, stupid jokes. Like, you go to the very first one where, like, she's reading a book about how to be the perfect wife, and it's like, oh, you should stumble and fall on someone because, you know, like, it was just like, oh, that's what a woman should be. She should be a bumbling idiot. Um, right, and just <laughs> thinking of how, like powerful wand and vision actually are and just <laughs> the amount of ass that they can kick and they're just reduced to <laughs> Adam sitcom goofy <laughs> yeah it's just goofy sitcom stars doing <laughs> dumb stuff well it's even funny to think wandavision this powerful nexus being getting into a car <laughs> and driving through town you know what i mean mm-hmm. like I, they showed something like that that's something not that important and to a lot of people they probably don't care but like to see someone who has fought Thanos, gone up against Ultron, did all these big events, just get in her car and like go drive to this house that her and her lover want, were gonna like live with, like the 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 things that they like touch on in the MCU is just crazy. Um, and then let's get. Makes in- you think Wanda can fly, right? She doesn't really need a car. What would she need a car for? Exactly, because at the very end, she's like, "See you around," and then she just away. Right. Um, with her awesome new costume, I I I love the new costume. Oh yeah, that's um, great. So let's get into the two end credit scenes. So the very first one, uh, we've got Monica Rambeau, which if you don't remember, she now has superpowers. Um, mm-hmm. seems like she can revert. She can see energy and also ch- um, manipulate the energy and things. It seems like it's her power. Um, she is then uh, confronted by someone who ends up being a... Cr- no, not Cree. Scroll. scroll. A scroll. Mm-hmm. Um, and she says that, uh, we heard you're grounded. Well, we want you to like be back up or whatever. It's like, who, who wants me? It's like, who wants me? He, he wants you up there. I'm pretty sure... He is Nick Fury. That's a, yeah, that's a hundred percent Nick Fury. But the whole time I was thinking, and as soon as soon as she like turned into a scroll, I was just like, "Oh, mm. Nick Fury." That she said that, and he's like, "Oh, he needs you." Like Nick Fury, Nick Fury. And she points up, I'm like Nick Fury, yeah. <laughs> and then it's, in the next film, it's not going to be Nick Fury. And you're like, "Fuck." <laughs> um. and, then, and then they get there, and Nick Fury's just like, "Hey, hey boner." <laughs> He's like, did you see that boner guy? That was that whole shit yeah. was hilarious. My, my, and go ahead. Another thing, actually, uh, it was I forget. I was watching some YouTube video about it. There was a line in Captain Marvel where Nick Fury says something to Monica as a kid. We're like, oh, once you start glowing like your Auntie Carol, we can like use you or whatever. And it's I, like, wow, that's it's actually coming true now. Mm-hmm. I, I would not she be surprised. She started glowing, and now they now they want her. I think I've only seen Captain Marvel like three times, so. I, that, yeah, I haven't that seen it that, that many, one. but it was just like watching a video, um, and I'm just like, oh, I, whoa, now so, I need to go back and watch Captain Marvel now. Yeah, so I was really hoping that it was going to be like the Fantastic Four or something like that in there, because there's a lot of rumors that, you know, Reed Richards might have been the scientist and all that stuff, because they, they really made it mm-hmm. seem like whoever the scientist person was that... Uh, Wu was trying to contact, I think, or no, Monica was trying to contact. It was Monica. Was going to be Which I think someone did. I think I heard that that wasn't supposed to be such a suspenseful. It was literally her just saying like, "Oh yeah, I know, I know. somebody." And they they didn't think that everybody would go crazy with all these theories and it's like, "Oh no, it's just this person that you've never heard about." Yeah. It's just not everything has to be a huge reveal. <laughs> that, Come on, guys. Yeah, cuz that's the problem cuz Marvel has already put the expectations for that. Mm -hmm. But they needed those specific lines in there because she needed to talk to someone that was that. But then everyone went, oh, oh, Reed Richards is that kind of scientist. But the the, the writers were the writers probably even had a meeting and were like, we're going to get like so many theories. (laughs) Uh, um. Right. Because like that one, it was, you know, they they, they were probably like, oh, everybody overreacted. But with Evan Peters and like the whole that being nothing that like they had to know what they were doing with that mm, I, they, they definitely did it on purpose because like you said they did it in the past with like uh, far from home where they like said there was a multiverse and then made this person seem like it's a multiverse person and then it wasn't so i, I and then it's just like turns out to be yeah. nothing that one was definitely an intentional like let down i guess it, again I, I think it's perfect for even quicksilver's j- character in uh the x-men series i know he didn't watch him that much that his whole character was a boner joke i it's it's hilarious, it, and it fits his character even that it was all just a build up to a boner joke. Like, I do really like the actor, and I really, really, really hope some way somehow if they're bringing the X Men back in that they do keep him because a lot of the newer cast I, I personally really like. Um, but 
let's get into the very final um, end credit scene, which is baller. We're out in the middle of, I'm assuming probably Sokovia would be my guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Wanda walking around making tea while she's astro projecting in her bed, um, reading through reading the dark hole. The dark hole. And that's what yeah. everybody was like. That is proof that she's more powerful than Doctor it- Strange <laughs> because Doctor Strange was sleeping while he was reading stuff in his outer form. She was walking around doing stuff mm-hmm. while reading. So that right there proves well, that she's more powerful than Doctor Strange. Yeah, that, that's quite literally why they showed that because I think they even mentioned it in the show like that she's more powerful. She, they said he, uh, the Scarlet Witch is more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme himself. Is what I think mm-hmm. Agatha I don't said. Know. Was so that part. It is just like a small thing. But is the Sorcerer Supreme? Was that the Ancient One or is that Doctor Strange? It was the Ancient One. It is now Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. the Sorcerer that Supreme makes sense. is whoever the like most knowledgeable sorcerer is. Oh, and whoever's like in charge of the strongholds yes, in like, and, and New York, it, London, and Hong Kong. I think Kong. also is the protector of the Eye of Agamotto slash the Time Stone, which I guess he doesn't have which anymore. No longer exists. Yeah. So in the past, at least in the MCU, was that. Um, but that's what the Sorcerer Supreme is. Uh, whoever knows like the magic arcs, arts the most. By the way, there's a great teaser uh, for Falcon and Winter Soldier. This is why I'm so excited for it, too. Just get into it. There's a part where um, like Sam's like, dude, these people must be part of the big three. And then Bucky's like, what, what do you mean the big three? You know, um, uh, robots. Uh, I think it was like robots. Uh, warlocks and... Um, I forget what the last one was. And Bucky's like, warlocks don't exist. It's like, Doctor Strange, that's a sorcerer. Okay. Warlock, see? It's like, warlocks wear, ki- like, war- warlocks wear hoods or something like that. Like, that banter right there, like, this makes me so excited. But at the very end of this end credits scene, though, we hear something. Which presumably is her kids. The kids. The kids. Billy and Tommy. Yeah, Billy and Tommy. <laughs> what great names. Um, calling out probably from another multiverse would be my guess because i'm assuming her kids probably do exist in some other um some other world because i think what marvel learned with infinity war and endgame is that audiences can take and will absolutely love when you leave your character and a your character is in distress state so i'm assuming like you know this ended like this whole thing built up and then you got wanda back to square one already I'm assuming in the multiverse of madness, she might maybe break the multiverse again, but she will probably end up with her kids actually existing and being yeah, physical. And with that, I assume it's like at the beginning of multiverse of madness, she's probably going to be at like her full potential mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, she spends all this time off screen reading and learning her powers, pretty much everything she can do. And by the time that movie comes along, she'll already be powerful enough to do basically anything Mm -hmm. which is exciting to see what will happen in the future because if you have her in the universe what's going to be the next big bad you know is it going to be galactus is it going to be dr doom like who who all right i know literally everybody has said this but i still think it could be mephisto based on what i've heard because i know everybody was theorizing that for wandavision that it never happened but from what i've heard because i don't i've never read the comics but what i've heard is that Mephisto created the children to torture her and then (laughs) pretty much and then when they turned out to be fake it was like I don't know his plan all along he is a multi so what I think oh what I think is that the uh when she hears their voices at the end of like at the end that's actually him Mm. uh making her he's just like making those voices so that she hears it and then it's gonna somehow tie into whatever it is he does in the comics i'm not entirely sure but that's that's what i mephisto is going to be interesting because of a few real life things so technically speaking mephisto if i remember correctly is the multi multi multi-dimensional basically devil slash satan Satan. of the mcu the only problem that they might not do this and is kind of sad is I believe China does not allow any devil imagery. So, mm-hmm. which I have heard that, and some people were saying that like it could be Nightmare, and they basically ha- it's it basically is Mephisto, mm-hmm. but they call him Nightmare because just to try to get away yeah. around that. There's there's so also I heard that from like Matt Pat's film theory. Have you <laughs> seen that video? I, That's I, pretty much how I heard it and then everybody else was talking about mephisto too i know there's also potentially like king the conqueror i think because he deals with time travel and with everything going to end game so that might be a little bit of something 
Um, so that might be uh, something that will be a big bad. But especially again, if the the power levels in the MCU are rising, you know, we've got Thor at like his fucking po- full potential. We've got Captain Marvel at her full potential. We saw it in game. We've and now we've got um, God the Sorcerer Supreme. He's he's up there. After seeing everyone in Endgame, everyone is like just the power levels are going up. You know, it's it's no longer Vision's just sitting this out because they don't want to accidentally kill someone because Vision can just you know literally right. phase into someone's heart if they wanted to. I think they are like, right, and that's like literally what Vision said in Civil War is like when people are more powerful, they have more powerful enemies challenging them. It's mm-hmm. basically that's going to be happening. You have more <laughs> powerful heroes, so now you're just going to have more powerful villains yeah. because of it. Yeah. Um. So I think now would be a really great time to get into the future marvel projects but before we get into those in in depth even though we've talked about a lot here's more about treadnought tv treadnoughttv.com is our new website where you can go and find all of our treadnought content all of our youtube videos will eventually be up on the website and there will also be some few exclusive videos only on treadnought tv you can also get access to the treadnought store where you can go and buy any of the merch that we've made in the past also, if you want to, you can become a Tread fan. For the low price of $3 every month, you can become a Tread fan and get access to exclusive content first, like the new and improved Treadcast and Tread Talk. Plus, you get access to every single Treadnought video a day in advance. So, go to www.treadnoughttv.com and check out the future of comedy gaming. Alright, we're back and we're talking Doctor Strange Multiverse Madness first, okay? We need a little bit quick fire, we're getting running out of time here, so... Uh, it's going to be a horror flick, supposedly, is what they said. Is that it's going to be one of the first actual like horror movies. And the exciting thing is Sam Raimi is supposed to be directing it as of current time of making this podcast. So with having his influence in it, there's also, also to beg the question, will there be any Spider-Verse or Spider-Man cameos? Um, will I'm... Wanda be the villain? You know? <laughs> like <laughs> villain. What I imagine, for at least the Spider-Man stuff, it's probably going to be like an end credit scene hmm. is what i or wait isn't it that spider-man no way home that yes. comes out before dr strange multiverse of madness yes right? yes it does hmm. so it'll be interesting if they would tease that in the new spider-man or in dr strange because i would think that whatever's coming up is just going to be teasing it it's not going to mm-hmm. be like the f- the full like multiverse story which I don't know, it could be, because I guess Multiverse of Madness, that would be the whole thing. Multiverse. <laughs> yeah, multiverse, that's, mm-hmm. it's in the title. But I don't know, it's it's interesting to think about. Yeah, I, I guess I, being a horror movie, I can't really see Spider-Man being <laughs> that big of a thing in it, so well, who knows? Well, I mean, yes and no, because Sam Raimi is known as a horror, horror movie director. The whole mm. scene in Spider-Man 2 with uh, Doc Ock, like, his arms while in the surgery was shot like a horror film with, like, the screaming and the girl, like, dragging her nails across. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's there's horror elements in those uh, Spider-Man films. Or even in the first one with the Green Goblin when he turns around when he's, like, the old lady and goes, Wah! Yeah. No, 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 with that, I remember when I was a kid watching that, it wasn't that part, but there was some point where it just, like, as a transition from one scene to the other, it's literally just... <laughs> Green Goblin's face takes up the entire screen and him, him laughing and like that I would just like jump back as a kid I, like, oh my god I was absolutely scared shitless to watch Spider-Man 3 because of Venom I, I like really? never yes I, I don't know why I just don't know if I, I just watched that at a little bit too young of an age but that movie used to scare me that I would not watch it and like the, the whole scene I think in the bell tower where he's like knocking it off I remember like being like a little kid and just kind of like no like <laughs> um. we watched that once recently and like actually seeing Venom like not on somebody and just being like the creature form he is like that was actually kind of mm-hmm. terrifying I'm surprised it didn't scare me as much as a kid because looking at that I'm like wow that's but they- that's like really cool but the problem is because it was only for like you know ten seconds because then right. for the whole time and the rest it was of on him scrawny was rock. like <laughs> was oh just like gosh. him talking in a normal human voice as Venom. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, and he's the, like the least intimidating voice ever too. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. great actor I will say. Good, good, good acting I guess. Right. But like they, the effects 
failed him there. I think they could have definitely done something great. So I, I'm excited to see like how into the multiverse they get. Like maybe they'll actually bring in the X Men and all that other stuff because they're going to eventually. They're going to because Fantastic Four movie has already been announced. I don't think they've announced any actual X Men stuff, but I'm really curious. With WandaVision, I really thought they were gonna um, introduce the Fantastic Four by having them be the people that go through the barrier and get powers, kind of how Monica did. Because yeah. that's how the Fantastic Four got their powers, is that they were um, astronauts uh, in space, basically, and they got hit with a bunch of cosmic rays uh, in this like oh, okay. huge like wave of rays. It might not be cosmic rays, but it's basically a huge wave of power that, since they're all different distances from it, got like um, different powers for different some reason. Powers, yeah. Um, at least that's how like the uh, for sure the film version went. The film version. Or is very very um, <laughs> campy, just like the old Spider Mans. I love them. Mm-hmm. You got Chris Evans as Human Torch. Th- those old movies are a joy to watch. Do not watch the Fan Fantastic though. God awful movie. <laughs> um, so watch the first two. Cause yeah, cause yes. I actually haven't watched any of there's, the uh, <laughs> there's Fantastic a, Four movies. There's a great scene in the second one that I love because I'm a I love cars. All right, I'm a Dodge. I'm a Dodge kid. I love. Dodge Challengers, Chargers, or whatever. It's fucking hilarious product pl- placement. Um, Reed Richards brings in the Fantastic Four car, and uh, I think Chris Evans look at, looks at the front. It's got a Dodge symbol and a little Dodge like grill, and he, and I think he turns around. And he's like, "Does it got a Hemi?" And I think Fant- and I think Mr. Fantastic Four, of course it's got a Hemi. Like for no reason, oh, they made this flying Fantastic Four car <laughs> a Dodge car. <laughs> It was like the most random, hilarious bit of like advertising <laughs> I've ever so it was seen. Like on the same level as like Olive Garden and Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> where it's just stupidly over the top and like yeah, it's or, just funny because of how dumb and out of place it is. Or like, oh yeah, we're gonna move to Zillow, or we're gonna move to San Francisco. Yeah, I, I've been checking Zillow all day. <laughs> wink, wink look at the camera wink or if you've ever seen uh the truman show basically how like all their like random product pl- product placements in that if you haven't seen the truman show i watched that recently it's on amazon Se- See, seriously really good i wanted to watch um, i tried watching it recently but i don't know, just wouldn't work for whatever reason that's mm-hmm. actually a movie i would i wanted to watch I- i've heard about it so many times dude it's so good jim carrey and it's so good i i feel bad for him getting stuck in because he was stuck in basically that like goofy role and wanted to do serious stuff he finally broke out of it for a while um but man he's such a great actor he has so much range um getting to range where we've got spider man no man no way home man <laughs> can't can't get home bro Where- where's home um, that you know when that's supposed to come out? That's supposed to be this year, right? Uh, Christmas this year. That uh, seems like way too soon. It's already filmed. I'm pretty sure. I think I might be wrong with that. But oh, so it's Christmas because I'm looking. I have the uh, mm-hmm. original MCU timeline. What it was supposed to be before COVID, and it was supposed to be July 25th, 2021. <laughs> so I guess that got delayed a bit. And it's yes. weird how everything went around, like shifted around. Because really, by now we were supposed to have the Eternals movie already mm-hmm. and Black Widow mm-hmm. and Falcon and the Winter Soldier was supposed to come out before WandaVision. Yep. And I'm pretty sure really weird. It makes me wonder why they made all those changes. It's just probably because what got filmed, I think WandaVision actually started filming first before Winter Soldier. Mm. And I think because of COVID WandaVision just happened to come out first. Um, and then, uh, I think that's just what basically happened was that um, I think legitimately I don't know for sure because I don't remember what the original lineup is I think the Halloween episode in WandaVision I think was probably supposed to air around Halloween uh, last year because it was supposed to be I think December or October when it came out Um, I might be wrong with that Um, but Spider-Man No Way Home we've got like technically literally no idea other than like the title now of Right, know, like I didn't even realize that it was fully filmed already. Mm, I I might be wrong with that. I think I know they at least started filming like a month or two ago. But normally it takes like three months to film all this stuff. I believe. Um, the only thing that we really know is, you know, Tom Holland's in it. We know that uh, Zendaya is in it. We know that I don't know his real name, but his uh, Instagram is Life Is Aloha. Uh, we Ned. got you know, Ned is in it. Um, they shared some pictures. We know that my theory 
even though because Tom Holland has said that no, there isn't, um, like you know the other Spider Man aren't aren't in this film. You know, I didn't see them. I didn't see them. And he said maybe they might be in it because maybe they were that green tennis ball he was talking to. However, there's a bunch of things pointing towards that they are in it. There was like <laughs> there was this random. It's probably bolt BS, but there was this random tweet I saw a while ago that and uber eats driver i think or a doordash driver tweeted out that who was in atlanta said yo yo i just delivered to that that motherfucker who played spider-man and made spider-man 2 he was pretty rude and it was like around the time that they were filming and it was in atlanta so everyone was like he, he he's in he's in atlanta filming spider <laughs> um the I mean, only... that's entirely possible. It really is. The only thing that I think we know for sure is that Electro is back as Jamie Foxx. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Foxx is back as Electro, who was the villain in Amazing Spider-Man 2. There is rumors that Doc Ock, uh, Alfred Molina, is back. That's not, I think, confirmed, I don't believe. The only thing that I think is pointing to this actually being Spider-Verse, though, is if you look at the reveal trailer and how they revealed the titles... Because they had all of the actors reveal different titles on their um, Instagrams before the reveal trailer came out. So there, you've already got alternate universe titles, okay? And then the mm-hmm. biggest thing that points, I really, really think, and maybe this is me just crazy theorizing, to it being Spider-Verse, is in the trailer itself, when it zooms into that whiteboard, they could have used any effect and any sound effect they wanted to to switch to the actual like high res title they used a glitching sound effect and glitching particles which is what basically was happening the entire spider verse movie was they were glitching in and out of that so that's, maybe yeah, i could that's good <laughs> because really marvel doesn't do stuff on accident Mm -hmm. that's why i'm really like you can really look into every little thing and like it's always hinting at something unless Mm -hmm. they're purposely leading you astray which who knows maybe that's what they did Mm -hmm. they're getting pretty good at hiding stuff and throwing people wrong ways and everything (laughs) the funniest thing about that trailer too about hiding stuff because you know tom holland is known to spoil things (laughs) he can't keep his mouth shut i don't know if they did this on purpose because if they did if like they didn't actually film it this way, but they added the artifacts artifacts later, it is hilarious because they probably legitimately didn't actually trust Tom Holland with the title, because if you freeze the video when he walks across the the, um, the whiteboard, there is like artifacts of a green screen around around Tom Holland and um, Ned. Again, I forget his real name, but there's like artifacts of like him being rotoscoped out or in a green screen. So him walking past the board, the board wasn't actually there, or finished maybe at least, when they he filmed that part. So they like quite literally might have not shown him the title. <laughs> um, which is funny because they might have like actually not trusted him with it. Um, but dude, I'm excited for that. I love Tom Holland. I love what they're doing with Spider-Man. Um, gosh, I can't wait, can't wait to see him in Uncharted 2 even. I, I'm, I'm yeah. for that. And I think it'll be interesting to see how they're going to make a Spider-Man movie that likely will have no ties back to Tony Stark. There may be a little, <laughs> little reference here and there, but like, because I know that's people's big criticism of the MCU Spider-Man is like, mm-hmm. oh, he's Iron Man Jr. Basically, like everything's Tony Stark. Like this is probably going to be, you know, I can't say for sure, but I think it'll probably be its own story yeah. separate from Tony Stark. Yeah, hopefully. Um but we are basically out of time. So next week, well, not next week, sometime in the future. We don't know what next week is going to be at the moment. Uh, something will probably come out. But look forward to our first thoughts on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Who knows? Maybe they'll release two episodes again like they did for um, WandaVision. But we will have our thoughts on that in a future Dorkside podcast. So thank you guys so much for watching this podcast. Thank you, Tate, for joining me and talking WandaVision. It was a pleasure. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We've been us you've been you you guys have a dorky nerdy day or stay dor- dorky i think that's what i say now welcome back everyone to the dork side podcast i am your host for the week jack and like i promised last week being a man of my word i have with us the garrett on the podcast for the first time ever say hello to the dorks garrett i'm fine okay <laughs>